Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. An offended ear will hear more offense, but the ear of faith will hear God. So you've got to have your ears of faith on today and look at Mark chapter 4. Let's, let's look at this for a minute. We've got to look at this because hearing is a big issue. And it gives the devil place because you won't hear. And let's, stop, let's shut the door on the devil. Mark 4 verse 1, say, thank God for the word. God for the word. Jesus began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Verse 2, Mark 4 is where I'm reading. Then Jesus taught them many things by parables, and he said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold. It's kind of like saying, Listen, listen. Pay attention. A sower went out to sow. Verse 4, it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. The birds of the air came and devoured it. Verse 5, Mark 4. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, verse 6 says, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. Listen to me carefully. The word doesn't get really rooted in you by reading it once or hearing it preached just one time. That's the beginning part. But listen to what I just said. The word doesn't get really rooted in you by hearing it once or hearing it preached one time. The most listened to audio on my iTunes is from a preacher named Larry Hutton. And he has a CD out called Power Up. Now, the youth director here, Josh and I, we're no golfers to brag about, that's for sure. And when we go golfing, most of the time it turns into listening to Power Up. Because we get tired of shanking them in the other fairway, losing them in the creek and the trees. So we say, well, what's left? Let's get powered up on the word because this isn't encouraging us at all to get out here and play golf. Sorry to call you out on that, Josh. Now, if you go with coach, it's totally different. The coach will smack it 320 yards down the fairway, and you stand there and go, wow, this is what it's like to watch a PGA guy tee off. Man, I wish I could do that. And if you're like me, you'll swing the club for four hours and throw your back out trying to do it, and you won't be able to do it. Sorry, I just told him myself. Power up. Why do we listen to that? Because it's the word. It's the word. Listen to me. I've heard those scriptures before. In fact, last I checked it, around 240 times. That ain't near enough. It's not near enough. Now, you can say, you know, 240 times. I mean, I've listened to it thousands of times. Well, see, you exaggerate all the time so you don't really understand how many times that actually is. But you listen to the same thing. Over and over and over and over, it's going to get down on the inside of you. Here I am preaching to you, 2022. That's the year we're in, right? Yeah, I'm up here preaching. I'm in the zone. That's the year, 2022. Did you know in 1999, I heard a sermon that impacted me, and some of that has come out this morning. I listened to that one over and over and over again. 2008, Pastor Keith Johnson preached at a conference in Fort Worth. I listened to that one. Now, this is a two-hour-plus sermon. Did you catch that? Two hours plus. I think I feel inspired to do that this morning. Just kidding. Those first-timers here are like, <laughs> I already heard one sermon. I've heard another one here. Uh, I'm just kidding around. We'll get you out of here in due time. Faint not. <laughs> do not faint in well-doing. I listened to that sermon over and over. It became a part of me. Knowing what time it is, being a son of Issachar in this generation, knowing what time it is on God's calendar. It's part of the whole reason Accelerate Church exists. Because I'm a sum total of all those sermons that my dad, Pastor Ricky, my pastor, taught over and over and over and over and over and over. And then said when I was a teenager, you're taking Bible memory. Me kicking and screaming, no! But me having to sit in my bedroom and learn those scriptures has done nothing but benefit your life. That's all it's done. Because of a dad that knew how to father a son. He said, this is what you're going to do. Well, I want to play more football. i got to play video games. 
You're going to learn scripture. And yeah, okay. I won first place four years in a row in Bible memory. You know what that meant? Nothing when I decided to rebel. So you might know the knowledge. You might have heard everything I've said already today. But if you're hard-hearted in here, there's no helping you until you repent. But all those seeds sown, they'll bring forth fruit. And here's my point. And I had to stop right here. I got a lot more to preach, but I had to stop right here. The word doesn't get rooted in you just glazing by. I did my Bible reading all year. I just glazed by that scripture one time. You got to meditate on this. You got to talk about it. You got you to ask if you're new here and you don't know, the, you know much. Ask the people that invite you. And what does he mean by this if you're struggling with something? And if they've been here more than 10 times, they'll probably be able to tell you. If not, they'll say, let me call so-and-so that's a leader here. And they'll be able to explain what's really being said here. Hopefully it's plain and clear. The king is coming. You better be ready. You better live your life according to the word and make that your standard. Can it be any more clear? That's as clear as it gets. If it's not supported in scripture, don't you dare say God's good with it. Don't you dare do what I talked about Friday morning on the radio with my parents. Start saying, well, my God's not like that. That's not my Jesus. You created a false Jesus. The only one that exists is the one of this Bible. The King of kings and Lord of lords that died on the cross and rose again three days later gave us his word. This thing is accurate. I don't care what person or preacher you hear say it's not. The word is accurate. It's inerrant. It's perfect. It's been tried over and over. Well, I found contradictions. No, it found contradictions in you. Because if you'll study to show yourself approved, you'll find out the only contradiction in here is your lifestyle. The word, listen to me, I gotta, I gotta move here. The word doesn't really get rooted in you just going over a scripture. Uh, just let me give you this quick illustration. My grass is a real work, let me tell you. I like, Aaron and I got a, a house we moved into last year. We needed it because the previous house I thought we'd never leave, but we had two children there and we kind of outgrew it. And so I was like, you know what? Praise God, he brought us another house. Well, when I went and looked at this house, the, the grass was was amazing it's immaculate I mean I was like wow this is so cool to inherit this but then winter happened springtime it's my responsibility and it ain't it ain't popping man it's looking bare it's looking desertish and I used to have my own little lawn company so I know a little something I mean just a little bit enough to have good looking grass most of the places I've, I've gone so I know just a little bit and so I'm like I'm trying to figure this out so I start calling people that know more knowledge than me in this area See, people get it if it's their grass. So I called. I said, you know, and finally I said, these people advertise they are the pros. So I called the pro out. I said, I need to schedule an appointment. Well, it'll be two weeks. We're so busy. So that's fine. Come on out. Now, there's plenty of guys in the church that I've asked, and they told me stuff, and it was all good stuff. But I said, I want the pro to come out here and look at it, right, the pros. If you advertise you're the pro, come on out. I, want, I need your professional opinion. So he's walking. He's looking at it. And he says, do you know anything about how much this has been watered. And I said, well, here's what I know. The previous owner, man, this was so immaculate. The first time I walked, this was like all green everywhere. It was amazing. But he told me this little tidbit of information that he would water all night long. And so, I, and to keep it, because that, that's how, and that guy said, I know the problem. He said, you have a root problem. I thought about this when I read the scripture. Because some of you, this is all it is. It's a root problem. You got so much going on, the word never takes root in you. Because the only time you yield your ear to is here on Sunday morning. Maybe Wednesday. If you're not on Facebook while you're in the church, you know. Was that too, was that too hard hitting no more? Did that hurt? Nah, you know why? Because you got your notebook out, you're ready to receive. That's why. You just come and play church, you ain't getting nothing out of this. I don't want you to leave, you know, and get out of here, but I'm just telling you, you're wasting your time. The purpose of this is so that you learn and you grow according to the word. You say, I'm going to change my life to fit this instead of trying to twist some scripture to fit my lifestyle that I want to do. He's your Lord. You don't get to make the decisions anymore. Sorry, no one told you that when you said, I received Jesus and you cried. But see, sometimes it'll make you cry when you have to tell yourself, no. My grass is still a work in progress. According to the experts, it's the root system, so... You know what they told me? He looked me right in the eye. He said, I hate to tell you this. But I said, I hate to hear it. Because, I, you know, I, I, I wanted him to come and snap his fingers, spray something, and it all just, woo. 
He said, you got you at least a three-year project. Why? Because you got to change the root system. Roots don't get changed by snapping your fingers. Get the word rooted in you. It's going to take some time. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. The root system is directly connected to your hearing, 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 hearing. Verse 7. Thanks for bearing that illustration. I'm not sure that grass illustration was great, but got the point across maybe. Verse 7. Some seed fell among thorns. Jesus is telling the story. The thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no crop. Wow. But other seed fell on Good ground. Everybody say good ground. good ground. And yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30, some 60, some 100. I like that. And that doesn't just mean times 30, times 60, times 100, by the way. I don't have time to teach that. Verse 9. And he said to them, he who has ears, huh? the same thing he wrote to the churches. He dropped right here in person, standing there in sandals, people looking at him. He was sitting in the boat, but I mean, hey, he couldn't see his sandals unless he kicked up his feet, and he might have. When he said, if you have ears, hear. Wow. I've noticed I've got a dog that seems to have trouble hearing unless I hold up a stake. <laughs> Don't let that be you spiritually. When he calls you in the middle of the night, by name, he says, come here. Don't just run to the fridge. Well, I'm hungry. Okay. Really, that spiritual hunger is coming out. Where you're like, oh, i got to get something else to eat. Maybe you need to eat something. I don't know. But it probably puts you right to sleep. And he's wanting to spend some time with you. What is it about our king that wants to spend time with us, his creation? Isn't it amazing? I find it amazing. He said, if you have ears, let him hear. But. Verse 10 says, when he was alone, those around him. Now, these are the disciples, not the multitude. So the service is over. The multitude's gone. These are those close to him, the 12. Ask him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it's been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So you're sitting here wondering, kind of like the disciples, why? Well, he kind of goes on to explain it here as he quotes again. Isaiah, he says, seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn. See, this is where I saw the days of Noah are here. When you actually hear, you turn your lifestyle. Until you turn from sin, you haven't heard. Hearing will be manifested when you turn from doing life your way. And then you'll understand you see, people want to understand before they turn. It doesn't work that way. Did you catch that? You got to hear, understand, and turn, and sins will be forgiven. How many of you would admit, this may be ugly, but you'd have to admit, I've sinned in my life at some point, and I have to be forgiven of that sin or I won't make it. How many have to admit that? I'll raise both my hands. Because I'm in that boat. Yeah. You're not saying you're in sin right now. Hopefully you're not. But boy, I would be pretty foolish to believe, even a congregation this size, much less our streaming audience and radio audience of who knows how many anonymous listeners. No one's in sin. I'm telling you, you better turn. Why? Sin clogs your ears. Jesus pretty much dropped a rebuke in verse 13. And you should thank God for rebukes because those he loves, he rebukes. And it says in Mark 4, 13, Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? 
I told you it's a rebuke because while they're asking him, tell us about that parable. He says, you don't understand it? How then will you understand all the parables? Oh, snap. Jesus just came in and just dropped a nuke on them. Literally. Could you tell us about that parable? You don't understand the parable? I mean, this deer in the headlight look, right? No. Well, how are you going to understand any parable? The answer is, I don't know. I need your help. Need your help. How many need the help of the Lord? Every hand, every hand. Let me ask you. How many need the help of the Lord? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. He said, all right, here it is. The sower sows the word. The what? The word is like seed. These are the ones by the wayside. Verse 15. When the word is sown, you may not realize this, but this is one of the powerful parts. In fact, I will say this. The highest part of the church is not what we do in the community. I'll let that rest on you for a minute. There's so many churches in America are so caught up. I'm not saying we won't do stuff for the community. I love my community. But I love the word more than I love my community. And what this community needs is more word being sown. But the word seems to be the, the least important thing that church has become about in America in 2022. And yet the word is the most important thing. This is what we offer. You come here every week, I promise you. If I'm not in this pulpit, there'll be someone in my position here, standing right here, sowing the word. Amen. We're not going to get up here and preach philosophy. We're going to preach the word. Because you've got to have the word. So here's those by the wayside, the word sown. And I underline this so you catch this. When they hear. So many people have read this about this, the parable of the sower and made it about the ground, sowing to that ministry is good, that ministry is good. And what Pastor Ricky said earlier applies. There are scriptures you can use. You don't sow to a dead work. All that's true. But this parable is not about ministries and sowing to the ministries in the good ground. These parables that he's telling, this particular one, is all about hearing. That's what it's all about. And most people have read through this and don't even get it. But you will because I'm preaching it right here today. When they hear. So catch this. The word effectively sown in someone goes through their ear. Just because you're here and you're hearing what I'm saying doesn't mean Satan's not coming immediately. To take away the what? See, he values it more than a lot of Christians do. Immediately he comes and tries to target the word. The word. Take away the word that was sown in their hearts. Write this down. The word is sown in the heart. And it must come through your ear gate to get to your heart. I'm going to knock it down. Yes! Amen! Ha! Woo! Praise God! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Just let God touch you. Glory to God! Glory to God! Here he comes on you now. This needs to end. I bind you, you foul spirit. You leave this child of God alone. Get, get, scat, and don't come back. Your future is bright. The Lord's here tonight with his anointing to mend, to mend. Whew. Glory to God. Hold fast to the word. Don't you back down. You hold fast to the word. Those who don't give a place to the enemy are the ones that hold fast to the word. <laughs> Verse 18, now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word. Okay, well, hold up. So we've looked here. We've seen the wayside. They hear the word, right? Y'all caught that back at verse number 15, right? In verse 16, we see those that are on stony ground. They also heard the word. Now we are, here we are in verse 18, and now this is the third kind of ground, the thorny ground. They heard the word. Do you see how this parable is all about hearing? Wow. And the cares of this world. This one has America written on it. 
the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things. Didn't even say it has to be something sinful, but just a desire for something else besides God can enter in and choke the word. Wrap your mind around this. The same force that's causing the sun to shine bright, I can see it through the window. If you were to walk out there right now from in here and look up, it would almost blind you. you nobody can look at it. None of you with your naked eye can just look at it. And the force from 93 million miles away that holds that and is so strong is the word that you could choke out by simply having a desire for something else. Isn't that crazy? You could hear a word like this, and if you get caught up with the spirit of the world and being busy, 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 the word is choked and is unfruitful. I think about this scripture a whole lot because the cares of this world is a real and present danger. The deceitfulness of riches. I gotta chase more, I gotta work, Pastor. I can't be at church. You need to draw a line in the sand. I didn't ask permission to share it, so I won't say the name, but there, there is someone in our midst that was told, you cannot get paid your overtime, which is where you make most of the money, unless you work on Sundays. And this man just drew a line in the sand. Here's what he said. I ain't working Sundays. That's the day me and my family are going to church. <laughs> so you know what people, well, poor guy, bless his heart. Hey, we don't need you coming up creating a soul tie here. Give me strength. Some of y'all, your radar goes off on that. Oh, I love you, I love you. It's like, would you stop for a minute and let God work? I mean, come on. So this man said, you know what? I'm not working. So here's what the, the boss man said, the superior. Well, fine. Taking your name off, you ain't getting no overtime. Well, see, this man works as unto the Lord, so he goes to work, and he works with an excellent spirit. So his boss like, man, I, I can't count on anyone else. Go ahead and come on. Get your overtime. <laughs> hey, that's cool. That's not where the story ends, though. I like this. I can walk all the way over here and make people nervous over here. So what happened? I don't know if there was a new boss. I don't know all the details of what happened exactly, but here's what I know. If someone discovered this guy's getting overtime when he refuses to work on Sundays. So somebody came in and said, oh, you're going to change this. He said, no, I already made that decision. I will not work Sundays. So I don't know if it's a new boss or what it was, but this person said, fine, we're taking your name back off. Now, see, when you are more interested in the word taking root than you are in people's opinions or even how much it looks like you're going to profit, because, uh, see, we're obedience-minded, not profit-minded. <laughs> Profit's on the other side of your obedience. If you're chasing profit, you got to chase obedience. That'll be a different way of living. Well, anyway, this man said, you know, I drew that line in the sand, so here it is. I'm not doing it. So I don't know how much time went by, but a little time went by, and they said, well, once again, we can't count on anyone else, so come on, get your overtime. Cool. Now that person's been promoted right out of there and says, we need you up in here Coordinating other, a higher level, bump and pay. Somebody say, thank God. Because when you won't compromise, God's going to take care of you. But you know how most Christians live? As soon as that first little pressure comes. I can't help it. I got to go to work. This is real life, man. It's easy as you the preacher. We know you say you're going to be there. This is your job. You're right. It's my job. I'm blessed. I get all that. I get you have a real job out there. But do you know how many men gave up? Working and making money this week to come and make this happen in one week's time? Now, I already know because I had a little test. We did a, a little project there, adding a bathroom onto my, my office. And I said, I'll use a professional to do it, and we'll see how long it takes. It takes a long time. I don't know if you have stuff done right now, but it takes a long time to get everything done. If you go that route. I'm not against it. We've got professionals here you could use that will do excellent work. But it's going to take a while to find workers that can work and you can depend on. I just want you to know something. Every one of you men that came up here, even if all you did was take out trash or tear something up or lay a piece of carpet, I want to tell you this. Every one of you that did anything, I view this as seed sown in this way. Maybe you didn't put money in the bucket. That's okay. You ended up saving this church 
I will say, uh, Garrett came to me yesterday and said, these people working, they, they did the work in a third of the time and probably a third of the price. I started thinking about it, and I told my wife, I said, more accurately, in about a tenth of the time and a tenth of the price. I'm amazed at what God's done here, but let me tell you something. If we had hired professionals to do this, we'd be meeting in the gym for the next month and a half, maybe two. But this was supposed to be a two-week project, and I, and I came up here. I said, what does it look like? Sunday, Pastor, we're going to be up here. Not everything is, is tipped off. We'll have everything all, all perfect here, and just give us some time. But you know what? It looks great. I'm glad to be here. This is the way God works. And look what the Lord's doing right here in our midst, man. It's a, it's a powerful thing. But see, if you're driven by the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, you don't, you don't do stuff like this. You look at it backwards. You say, so you want me to take time off to come help the church? That's the way people act, right? I mean, seriously? See, so they totally miss it. You're not thinking like the kingdom would think. And the word can't not produce fruit in someone that thinks like the world. All of those things, the cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, desires for other things, I could preach on all of them. They deserve more time than this, but I don't have time. The enemy on the walls, tick, tick, ticking away. All of those have the ability to choke out the word where it becomes unfruitful. The same word that causes the sun to blaze every day, and you count on it, I count on it. We know it's going to happen because the word's constant like that. But it can become unfruitful in our personal lives because we allow other things to affect the way we hear. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, hurry up. I got more important things to do. There's nothing more important than the word coming forth. Verse 20, but these are the ones on, sown on good ground. Everybody say good ground. good ground. I wonder if they had the same characteristics as the other three. Well, up front they do. They hear the word. See, if the word's going to do anything, you're going to have to hear. There's a lot of people that hear the word and it doesn't do anything. Because look at this next part. It says accept it. King James says, receive it. I'll talk more about that word in just a minute, but let's read the rest of the verse. It bears fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100. Write this down. Words are containers. And the Lord in his providence chose that his power would be contained in words. Well, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. While that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.